Oh no, I have to smell the yarn. Hello my darlings. Welcome to my little corner of YouTube land. Um, episode three, I'm going to try to talk louder into the mic <laughs> for a better experience for everyone. I don't know what my problem is and why I can't speak like loud. And I think it's because <laughs> I'm like paranoid that my husband, it's only me and my husband, that he's like standing on the other side of this door, like with a glass pressed up against it, like just. I don't, that makes no sense because number one why would he do that and there'd be no reason to but I don't know why it freaks me out a little bit and he's gonna watch it later when he edits so it's not like he's not gonna see it so I don't know what my problem is but I'm gonna try to be louder and try to direct to the microphone because I was doing it on the side and it wasn't picking up unless I was doing this so I'm hoping this will stay and pick up because um, I know I want I watch I watch the videos I know that it's hard to it gets hard to hear but um I had a pain flare yesterday so my um my throat is still scratchy um so that's going to be a little hard for me to <clears throat> be as loud as I want to be um so anyway episode three we are going to talk about our knitting goals for 2021 because it's almost January. So our next episode is going to be talking about our January goals. But before we do that, we have to figure out what our goals are for the whole year. Because I'm a planner and I got to plan everything down to the last minute detail, whatever. Um, so let's start with finished objects. This is finished. This is the Midas hat by... Oh my god, where did I write that? Because it's not on that page. Midas Hat by <laughs> Laura Rhineback. Uh, this is with the Cloud Born Fibers splash that is discontinued. Um, I really like this pattern. Um, when I was working it up, I didn't use the... Surprise! I didn't use the needle called for because my stitches were too loose so I went down the needle size that I did for the sock head I don't know what that was um, but again not what the sock head was meant for I went down a size from the sock head so I used the same I changed the number they're all in my notes but um, I changed the number because you, st you start with a smaller cast on and then right before this bent because it's got a double brim that you then work into to seal up which I love I've done that before on a cowl for uh, like a hemmed a uh, pico hemmed edge it's beautiful um, so I did change the stitch counts um, and then I followed the decreases but my decrease counts were different just because I went with a multiple of 12 I think so it was I think I started with knit 10 and then decrease because that would be 12 stitches. Um, now when I was trying this hat on while I was making it, it was kind of tight <laughs> like it always is a soup wash and I wasn't sure that it was going to, and it's so comfortable now that it's blocked. I just blocked it and just did this and it was fine, you know, inside and just went and it's fine. It dried up well and it's, it's really cool with all the, um, the um the way that it was re resist dyed um i really like it it's it, like you can tell i'm wearing a hat not just fading into the background um i didn't use the whole skein i did not measure i did follow the pattern though i worked it till it was so long i forget what they said and then i started the the um decreases and it's so it's a little bit big but it slouches nicely and then you've got and let's see if I can turn away out of the way so 
also, I think I might have a new favorite hat. Um, anyway, yeah, Midas hat. I saw it on um, Fat Squirrel Speaks, and I was like, what hat are you wearing? I have to have that immediately. And I think I like started it like a couple days later because um, I had to find the right skein for it. And um, I really like it. I really am enjoying this. It's plenty of, it's like, that's why I did the same, because my sock head fits so loosely, like, it's just the right amount of loose where it's not going to fall off, but it doesn't, like, squeeze your brain. So that's why I did the same stitch count. I figured I would get a similar fit. Um, I just had it done. Oh, next. Lovely. Uh, Lola's sweater is finished. This is the Perfect Fit Dog and Cat Sweater by JL on Ravel. Everything's on Ravelry unless I say otherwise, I think. Um, this was made with SSK Yarners. It's in one of my whips for today, so we'll go back to that, but that's all that'll be all down there um i'm trying to figure out the best way to show you her because she's sleeping like oh she's awake that's as far back as i can go Nolly. lola i look so cute on her come here yes give me your arms oh i know you're so sleepy She's so sleepy. Let's show everyone your pretty sweater. Ready? Look. Oh. Look at how pretty it is on you. Look at, look at my lovely. Look at how pretty she is. My pretty, pretty girl. I love you. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. Look at that. Isn't that, those colors are just gorgeous next to her tan face. This one came out a little bit bigger than the other ones. Um, I think that that yarn had a had a looser twist. Um, I don't think it was any thicker. I don't think it was like an Aran weight. I mean, it's pretty clearly a worsted weight, but a lot of times we get worsted weight and it's actually like DK weight. It's like a really light worsted and you're like, this isn't worsted weight. Um, so when I make her things, I use the same needles. Um, so I don't change needle sizes. I just work with whatever. Um, and so far the, as long as I get a good fabric, I don't worry about it. Um, but that one is a little bit, it did block out a little bit, um, bigger than I expected it to. Um, so I think it was cause the twist, the twist wasn't that, I don't know if twist would really have much to do with that, but that's, that's my theory is that the twist wasn't um, so tight um, but I'm actually glad that some of some of them are gonna fit differently than others because um, when her weight fluctuates you know that's helpful to have you know I'm playing with my microphone cord and I don't know why I'm getting fidgety um, I'm having a bad day and I don't want to talk about it. I'm trying to not like be Debbie Downer so I'm like, I can't cry at the beginning of my of two episodes in a row. <clears throat> so, um, what's next? Oh, my uh, lemon tea time shawl that I am working on. I am now halfway done. I've got um, about 50 grams of each skein left, and I had to go up to a longer cord. Um, reminding me of something and I can't think of what it is but I think it's from like a sci-fi movie or something like a something that was red I can I can't think of what it like black and red I can't think of what I would have seen it's not connecting in my brain but I get like a space feel I don't know what it is anyway um, yeah, about halfway through now, so 
I'm really excited to have this done. It's it's actually, I said it was triangle shape last time, but it's actually heart shape because you um, increase on both sides, on both edges, front and back, and then just once down the center. So it'll be a wide and shallower. It's not gonna be too shallow because it's already like halfway down my front, but I like big shawls, so. I make so many of those little ones that I like to have some big ones. And this silk is really warm for me, so I'm excited to have a DK warm. Because I don't have that many DK shawls. I'm very excited to have this done. And, um, oh. fell off my chair. The next one is on the top to go with Lola's uh, sweater. Go lay down, baby. Go sleep. Sleepy, sleepy. Go lay down. Go sleepy. Um, so you'll actually get to see one that's in progress. So construction starts here at the strap. Um, make the one side and then the other side and then you start working them together and then you cast on oh my god hang on you weirdo you're fine there you go there you go there you go um then you cast on the back stitches here and I use a backwards loop cast on. That's my favorite cast on. I use that for everything because it never gets twisted when you do it. There, you can actually not twist. There's no way to twist it because you can just pop it around. So, so yeah, you cast on here and then I work this whole back part in ribbing just to give me some extra stress stretch and I do that on a smaller size needle and then I'm at the point now you keep working until you cover your bust and then the rest is um, two by two ribbing so I'm right at the two by two and since I had two skin because it's 150 right you have two skeins um, I decided to uh, work one row in one skein and one row in the other skein, which I have never actually done before. I know they tell you to do it, and with all my Malabrigo tops, I didn't because I didn't care. Because I don't, I, it doesn't bother me if there's a big glaring change, or I don't care because like those tops are for me, so I don't care. Like. Anyone looking at it, unless you're a knitter, you're not going to go, oh my god, you used two different skeins that didn't properly match. Like, no one else is going to care. Like, no one's going to appreciate that that's what happened. So, I didn't care on those ones. Um, but this one, I don't know why. I guess I decided to just do it just to do it, maybe. I don't know. But I think I like the color a little bit better seeing it in a bigger... I'm still going to have to try it on over my robe because <laughs> I can't be bothered to get dressed. <laughs> so it's like a pandemic. Everyone's working in their pajamas, right? Like, anyway, um, that's my other whip. And then my other whip I haven't actually started yet because I just found the skein. Uh, but it is my favorite colorway from another local indie dyer. I'm nuts with indie dyers. Oh, you want to hear about this? I haven't showed you this yet. This is Whimsy. Whimsy Stitches Designs. I'll have to put that bag in here. What am I doing? This is okay. So we'll do Whimsy Bag Info. 
How about that? Um, this is, I got this also at the Virtual Fiber Festival. I forget which one. Um, but those are cool because like you can sit at home and like every hour someone comes on and like either they do like, they'll like go through their stock and show you everything they have or um, some of them do like dye, um, not experiments, demonstrations. They'll do like dye demonstrations so you can watch how they dye yarn and stuff. It's real fun. But anyway, let me take this out of here. This is from Tina's Twisted Fibers, and uh, this is her, oh no, I have to smell the yarn. I, I know where she gets her, her base, she gets her base from Wool to Die For, which is where I get my base, and the reason I get my base there is because her, their yarn smells so great, it like, sometimes when I'm in here, just working along at night, I just smell wool. Like, you know, the smell of wool, just that like comforting, lingering scent of wool. Not like barnyard, not like that. I've smelled that kind of wool, not that, but this is, it's so nice. So <clears throat> when I first started dyeing, she was like the only dyer that would tell me anything and it was like two or three years ago and there was no there was no one to help you there was no one to tell you anything like it was like these big giant secrets of how to dye yarn and she was so nice and she would answer my questions and I was like well where do you get dye where do you get where do you get yarn where do you you know what do you do and so um she was the only one that was like nice to me and I, th I thought like why wouldn't she be nice to people that want to get into your craft like I don't know why so because she was so nice to me that I wanted to not keep secrets <laughs> for this art because it's already so hard to find any sources so so I really try to get people to uh to go to Chemnitz because even though she died I I was trying to say this in my last video and then I got I got sidetracked um, even though she does dye some stuff with Kool-Aid and I don't do that because I I started with acid dyes because I knew this is what I was gonna do I didn't I mean I think it's great if you do the food dyes because then you don't have to have special pots designated and utensils and you can it's easier if, if you just want to see if you like it if or if you just want to do a couple things hey Um, but I knew immediately that I wanted to do a lot of black dyeing and you can't get good blacks with food coloring. Um, but I still learned a lot from watching Rebecca because even if she's not using acid dyes, she does use acid dyes, but whatever dye, she uses a lot of different types of dyes. No matter what dye she was using, I could learn the technique she was using. So that was really helpful even if it wasn't something, um, that I would use, I still watch because I was going to learn something, um, and I learned a lot. She's she's probably, I mean, I learned a lot from books that gave me. I'll have to figure out what book that was. I've read that, that gave me like mathematical formulations that I love, like weight of fiber and depth of shade, and explained all of that. But anyway, this is her color, Harlot, which I love. And one of them went missing. So anyway, I'm going to cast that on tonight. Um, so it will be a whip. <laughs> but I'm going to make my six gain garter, my six row, my six gain, six row garter. Um, anyway, this is Tina. See this little. Um, I'll link her below too because I have, <laughs> I have the same in four different <laughs> bases because I love this color. So this is um, silk and it's, it's so pretty. It's got such a nice shine. She, oh, excuse me.
leave her alone. Um, it's got a nice sheen to it. Even, and I'm like, I'm. these are literally the only two silk projects I've ever done after I tell you guys that I don't really care for silk. Now I'm like, look at all these. <laughs> I've got the two projects. And then this is Lorex. Have you seen Lorex? Lur Lurex? Not Lorax, like Dr. Seuss, but Lurex. 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 It's got, it's, it's not quite like Stellina. Um, what is the problem here? There we go. So it's a really high twist and it's twisted right in there through the whole thing. The whole thing. I think that's just, and it's not like Stellina where it pops out. Um, I can show you a Stellina for comparison. No, but keep in mind, this has double the Stellina. This is 20% Stellina, and this is 10% Lorex. But see how it's already a different sparkle where one, the Lorex goes all through, and the Stellina kind of also sticks out, like it'll stick out like a halo, like it's a, see the bit of confetti sticking out from that, that black. It's like fuzzy. This, the Lurex doesn't do that. It stays in the twist. Uh, so I'm excited to work that up. I don't know what I'm going to make out of that one, but then I have it on regular sock. This got lost <laughs> for like a whole year. Like I'm, it must have been when I was for when I was preparing for last year, when I was preparing for the stash busting and everything, I think I put it in something and then just like left it. Like, I because there were two skeins that went missing, this and the the jaws, the shark one, and um, I knew I had to throw them away, and I hadn't donated anything. Um, well, I did donate, but that was before I cleaned out, um, before I started the stash busting. So. Um, so like this has been missing and I'm really excited to have it back because now I'm going to finish it. I'm not going to finish it right now because uh, this is a summer shawl. So this will be something that'll quickly get finished. You can't even see what's, it's going to look like this. I'm doing the same. This is a pattern I made up. Um, this is Alegria uh, Agave. And it's just a basic, um, stockinette and um, lace. I like it because it's easy to do. Oh, this was washed with the jasmine scented Euclid that I ran out of and they didn't have any so I, I had to get unscented because I didn't know if I would like any of the other scents. So it still smells like that. Um, so this will look like this and I love this because in the summer you can just toss it on and like I said I wear a lot of black so you puff that on and you suddenly have a whole bunch of color on you dark colors dark anyway I love it so that's what that's gonna be in the summer so you'll see that again when it's finished I'm sure um, that's all my whips and stuff. But yeah, I wanted to do the cashmere. The cashmere in my six row garter repeat that I love. Um, from All About That Brioche. Uh, because it's, it's going to be January. And um, I can still wear cashmere in January. Um, I also want to talk about that. Um, that is my lucky number. And the yarn is from another, um, 
Actually, it's from the Stellina that I just showed you. So I'll bring that out because that gives you the thing. Um, laughing Cat Fiber, she is down um, south of me. I think she's around Columbus. I'm up in Cleveland. Um, and this is her Black Tails. It's so pretty. And it's, I, I'm pretty sure this is UV reactive. Um, not that I go anywhere that has UV, but you know, um, this is like the first one that I made. So this would have been a garter. This is actually what inspired the garter because I hated making these teeth things. They were annoying. Um, but here's her laughing cat. And this is another one of hers that I really, this is interstellar. And this is part of her um, deep space collection. She's working on all these like deep space, like nebulas and stuff. And it's really nice. And I also have, I have some of those, but they're in there because they're on deck to be. And then she did one for um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg for her, um, her passing. So I had to grab this one. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's just looks a lot like Harlot, but I have a type. Get off the get off the dog. Um, this is also this is MCN, so this is gonna be a probably <laughs> come back. That will probably also be there we go. Um, that'll probably also be um, one of these small ones, unless I come up with a plan to mix it with something. Which I don't know, because I have to go through more of my stash. Um, I have one squishy mail today. Um, because I have one more that has been lost for like two weeks. It was supposed to be delivered last Monday. I don't think it's going to get here before next Monday because they, they don't know where it is. Um, so anyway, and then I have a knit crate box that's supposed to get here uh, today. So we'll see. Um, this is a sock yarn. Um, what you call it um self-striping sock and I I don't like stripes <laughs> I don't know why do, are you eating you better not be eating anything he likes to eat yarn like really really eat yarn so um number one I don't make socks I will make socks One day I will make socks. I actually have made um, worsted weight socks. Like I specifically bought uh, from Briggs and Little Tuffy Sock. Um, I have some in there. Um, no, it might be there. Um, because I wanted to see if I liked making socks before I cast on a fingering wing because it's like two weeks to make something and not know if you're going to like it or not. So I was like, I can make a pair of worsted socks in like a day. So, but I never finished them because I have, I have a high arch and a high instep. So I had to buy this book that tells you how to like measure your foot and do all this stuff. So Eventually, I'm going to get to it, but I wanted to, um, there is another sock that I'm, or striped sock that I'm planning to get that I'm, that I do want to turn into one of my shawls, <clears throat> but she said she's not dying any until like the beginning of the year, so I'm still waiting, but that one isn't really stripey, stripey, like this is stripey, so I like these colors because I love green and I love black <coughs> and I love 
gray. So I thought, you know what, I could live with these colors. These would be pretty cool colors. So I'm not going to make socks out of this. Who's this from? PK Yarn. Hello. No. Okay, I'm giving up. Pick a yarn. Hand painted by Pamela Kirschman. Oh, Miss Pamela Originals is why I didn't recognize PK yarn. She's on Etsy. I will link her below too. Um, it's a 7525, 100 grams, 463 yards. And this is called Green Canyon. Green Canyon. Um, so I will probably. I'll probably make some matching fingerless mitts with them because I'm more likely to wear that than um, socks. But I might like socks because I saw another colorway from, oh my god, who was it? Oh, I can't think of the name, but it's the name of two people. I think one is Brenda. I might be making that up though. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna say like Brenda and Laura, but that doesn't sound right to me either. Um, I'm pretty sure it's them. They have a Kylo Ren that is red, gray, and black, but it was like a little expensive for me to pay for or something that I'm not sure what to do with. So if I make this into, you know, What did I just say? Fingerless mitts, and I like them, then I might buy the Kylo Ren color because I really did. I have this thing for black and red too. And I am I am never going to dye self-striping yarn. That is a headache I do not want because so much goes into that. And um, oh, and ombres and gradients. Do you know, okay, I'm gonna send you somewhere. Go take a look at Witch Candy Yarns because she just started dyeing on um, sock blanks what she calls fadiants and they look awesome and now I'm like crap that's something else I'm gonna want to try now and goth that out and oh my god now I, I've got some ideas from that and it's amazing so she makes a gradient on a on a sock blank but usually you dip dye those and so you only work in one color so I don't know how she does it I don't know if they're hand painted or I would probably use like a squirt bottle or a, a spritzer that's what I use when I hand paint to do or a um, so like I give you noises because I can't think of the word I don't know how she does how she actually does them I don't know if she's said but um so she does different color it's it's a fadiant it's a fade from one color into another and it's it's amazing they they look so good so I I have a feeling that when other dyers see that we're gonna see a lot more of that and she has single blanks and double blanks I think um, Like it's super cool, like super cool. And of course I didn't order any sock blanks, so I'm going to have to order some sock blanks, but that is not on my list of goals for next year. So let's talk about goals for next year. So Nick goals for 2021. And I want to know what your goals is. So tell me, comment below and tell me. Uh, what your goals are, what you're looking forward to doing this year. If you're going to stretch yourself, if you're going to take it easy, uh, if you're going to finally do that one thing that you've been wanting to do. Um, I'm going to tell you what my goals are. I am set to finish 48 projects this year. We all know that, which is going to be my top and that shawl. Those will both be done by the end of the year. Um, that other mini shawl probably not because I'm I'm probably gonna 
I don't want to because I don't want it to mess up my stats. So it might, it might magically get done January 1st. Um, but anyway, um, okay, my plan for next year um, is to plan. I do the Ravelry challenge. Do you know that in Ravelry you can do a challenge and you set how many you want to, how many projects you want to do for the year? You can do that. So uh, last year I said 24 because I figured I could get two projects done a month easily. And I, I did 48, so I did more like four projects each, each month. But, you know, that's a lot of things to get. I'm so proud of that number. I'm like 48, yay. So this year I'm going to do, I'm going to go with 24 again because I'm going to go with one big project, which is usually um, like a two-color scarf or something harder that I haven't done before, like, um, I don't know. I haven't picked out anything yet, because um, that's just one of, like, I have quite a few goals. So my first goal is 24 items. One of those is going to be a dye project that I dye with my own yarns. Like, and I'm not talking over dyeing other people's yarns, because I have a ton of that to do. but from bare yarn to my yarns for Morning Dew Studio because I think this will get me in a better position to um, transition to being a dyer and getting things ready for sale and opening up a shop because that is like I want to do that but I'm also terrified to do that so I figure if I have samples of my yarns knit up, that'll probably be a better, because I, I, I'm so like such a planner and such a, like, um, like I'm organized in my mind. I'm not organized in my space, but my mind is very organized and the way I do things is like deliberate and planned out and stuff like this. So I have already January through May planned out for dying and those are all going to be done with my the six row garter shawls so I'll be making five more of those made with my all yarn made with my yarns dyed specifically different um, different um, not dye applications because they're pretty much all going to be dyed the same way but like one will be like variegated with four colors and then another one's going to be a tri-colored and then two are going to be two colored but in a different way and then one um, is going to be a bunch of mini skeins because I want to do a mini skein project so that's probably going to be my last one um, but I think they're all going to end up shawls because I think that's a good way to show the color progression um, plus I like making them, so <laughs> I'm probably going to replace all of my shawls with my own shawls. Um, so that's, that's a big, to do one dye project and work it up in a month, plus one big project. So that's why I want to keep it easy, saying my one skein shawl, that's a pretty easy thing to do that I can get done in like a week if, you know, if I have nothing else to do, so... Yeah, no, it probably takes me more. I don't know how long it takes me. I'm trying to think how long it takes me. I have no idea. I thought it took me four days, but those are my tops take me four days, like four full days. So two eight hour, eight hour day, eight hour day, eight hour day, eight hour day. So however many, eight, 16, so 32, 32 hours to make one of these tops. Um, but I don't do those in fingering. So anyway, some of my other goals. <laughs> I'm also planning, uh, there are two sweaters I want to do uh, next year. I want to do the Zephyr and the Riverside and maybe a Flax, I'm not sure. I got to check and see if, because what I do is I check my gauge first and then I look for patterns that fit my gauge because <laughs> you can search that in Ravelry by your gauge. Very helpful if you are an overly uh, loose knitter or a tight knitter and you have to make 
changes to your needle size, that's harder to, your gauge is sometimes messed up. So like that, um, the sweater I did, the beach, beach something, that actually called for sport weight and it was knit like with big, bigger needles. So it was like a really loose sweater and I got a like tight fitting sweater using worsted, but at the same gauge. <laughs> so that's just how I have to work. Um, oh, I also wanted to do a pair of mittens, those Cebu, whatever, but I'm not doing those. I'm doing the death flake ones. Because, yeah, in red and black. I already have oh, the cuffs knit up. I just, it's one of those where you really have to focus, and I'm not good at charts. So I also want to do, I think, a colorful yoke sweater. You know, those raglan yoke with all the colors. Um, but again, I don't, I don't know if I would like that, because the fit seems to, like, if you raise your hands, your whole sweater comes up, and I, that, that would be fiddly on me. So I'm not sure if I even want to do a raglan if I want to stick with uh, the the v-necks. I'm very comfortable in v-necks. I don't feel like anything's trying to strangle me. Um, I totally want to do something with mohair and I have two skeins of mohair um, that I need to decide actually what I'm going to do with them. And if I just want to do something simple like a hat or if I want to do like a shawl or I swear it's going to end up a six row garter if I don't have a plan for it. I did see something, I think it was called driftwood or something that I was considering. But I think that was an actual scarf, I think. I'm not sure. Um, again, I'm thinking I might do socks this year. Arm warmers, which I always say I'm going to make arm warmers and I never do. Um, also, the shorts I talked about last time, there was going to do a pair of shorts. Now, I changed my mind on the shorts. Not of doing the shorts, but how I'm going to do the shorts because the sport weight yarn that I have for the shorts is bright pink with Stellina, and the other one is purple, like a really bright purple, like a royal purple with Stellina. And um, they're very bright and like attention and... I'm 43 years old and I'm not sure I need a pair of hot pants <laughs> that are bright and sparkly. <laughs> like, I'm not sure that is where I want to go here. So I was thinking, I had two thoughts. My first thought was, I have sport weight bear, of course. So I was thinking, I've all also wanted to try this, that I want to work up a project in bear yarn and then dye it afterwards. Do a single process black. I could wear a pair of black hot pants in the summer at 43 years. Well, I'll be 44 by that time, but. And then maybe I could work my top pattern into a sport weight and then use those two sport, those two sport weight colors as tops to wear with my new cute shorts. So that's what I'm thinking. And I'm thinking that because the shorts start here and it, they're, it like has um, ribbing that goes down to the hips. So if I do this, right, it's going to give me this, this um, stitch count that I need for my shirt to make my shirt. So if I do that, I'm already halfway to changing the shirt to um, sport weight. So that's what I think I'm going to do. And then I can do a sport weight. And then if the sport weight works, <laughs> maybe eventually I'm going to get that fingering weight top because I bought two skeins specifically for a fingering weight top. And I don't want to, like I, it's so pretty. I want to use it and I want to use it for a top, but I don't know if I'll ever get there. So that might be next year. Oh, no, it might be this year because I found a pattern that is a remake of this rem okay this is a remake of a remake <laughs> there's another remake of this original that she made in a fingering weight so that too might give me uh at least a starting place so i might get fingering and sport weight done 
in these tops this year, which would be great. And then I would only have bulky weight, which I may or may not do. So I think those are all my goals for this year. Um, but some of my goals are kind of huge. Like, um, yeah, I have another cowl that I wanted to uh, dye for the yarn for. I also want to do the painting bricks shawl. Have you seen that, Stephen West? It's like I I saw it, and I'm not I'm not a huge Stephen West fan. He's a little too colorful and uneven for me. Like there's always like lines going this way and lines going that way, and I I am too. I don't like that. I don't it. It doesn't, it is not pleasing to me. It makes my like brain crunch. Like, I don't like it. Um, but I like things that have like clean lines, and and so the bricks are like, you know, they're all the same size, and they're, you know, they are in a logical pattern. So I like that. And on the very first page of his, there is someone, I don't. I didn't pay attention to look because I didn't plan on talking about this, but um, it's not, you know, on the featured, um, and it's a rainbow. It's a rainbow with black, and I was like, oh my God, I can do that in black, and I can dye my deep dark rainbows in there. So that's my plan. Um, but that is such a huge, it is huge. It's a very, very large shawl and I got to figure out how many mini are they minis or micro minis I don't I got to look um because uh, that might have to count as two and it can't count as two so I would have to plan in another maybe an over die for one of the because I, I don't think I can get that that shawl done in one month and and also have another project so I'll have to have something on backup in case but I was thinking of waiting till fe till December to do that one where I, I would have because I'll probably have more time then because like this December is going like so slow and I'm like I got two projects left that's it so plus it doesn't really matter if it's done in December I'll just count it as December I don't know I haven't decided yet there's lots of stuff I want to do but anyway, that's that. So, yeah, I'm really excited to do the Zephyr. The Zephyr has been on my list for a long time. And, um, cause it's a um, cardigan, but it's got that cool, like, it comes over and attaches. And I really like, I like that kind of, that looks like it's gonna be so comfortable for me and not like choke me or anything, so. That's where I'm at is comfort, is comfort and um, <clears throat> making my own colors, making the color that I want and <clears throat> the aesthetic that I want. I'm also hoping to, in the next year, have some time for some bags, but I'm not sure I will. I even had my favorite bag out here and didn't even tell you about it. Then I'll tell you real quick about this bag. because this is my favorite bag and this woman is amazing and I will definitely link her. She does mostly like licensed characters and stuff. I didn't see a lot of stuff that wasn't. Um, I have two Maleficent bags from her. This is the first one. This was from uh, Knit Disney. It was a Maleficent. Um, you got this and you got two skeins of yarn. Um, so of course I had to have it and um, what is it frayed knot or not knots or it's the one that doesn't have her name on it you know no matter how well I plan this out there's always something I forget okay well I'm gonna have to give you I I love this bag so much I, I had to go find her because there's nothing in here that tells me who she is so I went to the Knit Disney and, um, like, went all, went all, like, like, stalked the 
her blog looking for who did this, who did this. Because I needed another one. So I found her on Facebook and I messaged her and I'm like, hey, got this bag last year and I want a bigger one. <coughs> and so she's like, okay. And she so showed me these pictures and one was gray Maleficent. I was like, boom, that's what I want. And then she lined the bag in purple and I didn't even tell her that. I'm like, purple, she put purple in the bag. Um, now I know she, she makes her tops a little bit differently now. I don't know how she does it. Um, but this is why I love the bag so much. She uses paracords, which I think people are starting to use now. But it is, this is so easy to open, so easy to close with my arthritic fingers. Like you literally just put your finger in here. No, it's not gonna be, I think it's full. That's it. And it comes right open. I love this thing. This is my favorite bag. This is my favorite bag. I'm always using this and my other Maleficent one because they are my favorites. And she just, I got two skeins in here. It's perfect for like when I make those shawls. This is usually what I use for the shawls. Um, if I'm not using the, um, I mean, I got the plastic see through ones specifically for those shawls, and those fit good in there too. But they used to be in here, now this is whatever else I'm working on. So I'll lock her down there. I think it's not something not 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 afraid not she's on Etsy but I messaged her on Facebook um, and went over what I wanted and she did it um, she's really nice I really like her I was like oh my god I can't believe I found you I need another bag um, so like our biggest bag and then whatever I don't know what size that one is like medium maybe I don't know small I don't know um, I know she has an Etsy page though, so I'll link that too for you guys if you need the best bag in the world. Um, but I don't know how she does her tops now, because I was like, okay, she's like, oh, I changed the top, and I'm like, can I pay you extra to give me the, <laughs> to do the old top? <laughs> um, she didn't make me pay, so she just gave me the old top, but I love her bag. She's my favorite bag maker, absolutely. It's so great with my, so then I went around all my drawstring bags and replace those stupid ribbons with paracord so much easier so much easier so that's how I'm gonna because I do drawstring bags and um, I was looking for something because I was using um, the sweatpants um, you know that kind of thing because I hate ribbon I hate ribbon so I was doing that but I wanted something smoother and the paracords are just they whip right in and out. I love them. So. There you go. Anyway. I feel better than I did when I started this. Um, I had a pain flare yesterday. <clears throat> and I didn't sleep. Uh, the night before, last night, I didn't sleep all this last night either, so. And that kind of makes the rest of my pain all really bad. And then, um, my poor foster dog went to get neutered today, and, um, my day is ruined. My day is really ruined. I'm really sad, and, um. Fostering is hard. Fostering is hard, and you know you do all you can for these dogs, and only to find out that the people, the people that were in charge of their care before, didn't get them any care, and when you get them, it's too late for anything to be done, and. makes me angry and it makes me sad and he was a good dog and I'm still gonna foster I'm still gonna save him because it's obviously still necessary because people are not spaying and neutering their dogs at five years old 
and leaving them to develop, you know, untreatable conditions, which makes me mad at them and sad for him because he deserved better than that. And um, his name was Buddy. I called him Buddy. He would talk to me. He was a fun little guy. But anyway, I'm going to take care of myself and try not to burn out <laughs> and rescuing because it's been a hard, hard year in rescue this year. It's been a really hard, I got a lot of dogs that could not be helped that um, came here me to assess and I get I get to say you know that that I think this is bad and then the vet goes yeah this is bad and um, it's hard it's hard I'm still gonna do it I don't care I'll save those dogs I don't care how bad it hurts me I'm saving those dogs I will save two today I don't care I'll go right back out Go right back out and do it. So anyway, hug your dogs and your kittens and take care of them. And make sure they're spayed and neutered and take them to the vet regularly to be um, assessed and um, make sure nothing's wrong with them and so that they don't have to come to someone like me and... Because it's hard for us to do this over and over. I'm sorry, I'm really sad today. I tried to put on a brave face. I really tried to be happy today. But, I mean, December is a terrible month for me anyway. I'm always depressed anyway, and this just makes it harder to, to get through the day. So I'm going to go cuddle with all my dogs who are ridiculous and fun and happy, and they will make me happy. So next week, get ready. Oh, you know what we're doing today? Say goodbye to Baby Yoda. The last episode of Mandalorian this season. Isn't he just the cutest? I am very sad to have to wait for more Baby Yoda. I'm sad about that, but whatever. He's so cute, isn't he? Um, Next episode, we are going to talk about um, what we're going to do for January. We're going to plan January because now we've planned, um, we've, we're planning this year, so we're looking at our goals for this year. So now we got to figure out what our goals going to be for January. So we'll talk about that next time. And we'll talk about scheduling, and I might write in pen so you can see some stuff. <laughs> I will, but it's not going to go in my notebook because that will be written in pencil for me. But I will make like a mock one for you so you can see what I do and how I do stuff. So if you want to get ready, go through your stash and write down everything you have that you want to use up and try to find some, um, what you want to do with it. What does it want to be? What are you going to make it into? And um, yeah, you guys should... I can't wait till like I hope we get a group eventually and we can all go in there and um, help each other and help go what do I do with this and we can help you decide what to do and um, wouldn't that be fun wouldn't that be fun to have a little a little group a little community where we could all come and that's that's my dream for this is that we eventually have a, a little community anyway I'm gonna sign off because I'm about to hit. Uh, an hour and I don't want to so <laughs> I'm gonna say I will see you next time bye guys